One of the questions that seems to keep coming up when I do my Monday night lives at 7 p.m. generally is around, you know, what career should I pick going forward? Should I be a data engineer, a data architect, a data analyst, a scientist, and so on and so forth. And sometimes this is clearly connected to the financial aspect of how much you can possibly make for these different salaries or if these roles will continue to exist in the future. And I wanted to kind of help you guys out there answer the question, which role should you take in the future? Especially if you're just jumping into the data field, you know, coming out of college, or if you're thinking about switching. Specifically for this video, I'm gonna be focusing more on data scientists, data engineers, or analytics engineers. They're kind of the roles that have arguably a lot of what feels like crossover and I'd even say pretty similar salaries. And so we'll start there with salaries because again, I have a lot of people asking, should I become a data engineer, an analytics engineer, a data scientist? And if your only metric is money, arguably there's not a huge difference amongst these salaries. Like we were just to pick out a few, you know, look at Glassdoor, um, you know, day scientists make about 120K and analytics engineers and data engineers are upwards of 110 to 113K on average. And we're not really, you know, comparing experience here. But of course, these are just looking at salaries at average jobs. If we were going to pull up a quick uh, chart that Mikel built, which I'll link his whole article below, um, you'll notice here that if you compare the different salaries, you know, uh, just looking at general jobs versus a FANG company, a general job, often for most data roles, is somewhere upwards of 170K, whereas all these other jobs, you know, working at a FANG, is upwards of 230, 240, 250, and that is a massive difference. So let's bring up some FANG salaries. Starting with Facebook, if we compare data engineer salaries to data scientist salaries, we'll actually see now that things have reversed, and there's about a 10K difference here, you know, 300K uh, for data scientists and about 310K for data engineers at a what is essentially a senior level between data scientists and data engineers at Facebook. Whereas if we compare this to Amazon uh, here, we'll see again for a similar level, um, data engineers make about 268K and data scientists make about 313K. There is a slight leveling difference there, but overall, if you compare these two, um, again, you can kind of see the difference where sometimes it just depends on the company you work for. And that's kind of the key. Another important factor, I think, with salary is you should understand that don't pick a job for salary, but instead you should pick a job that you like. Because honestly, if you pick a job due to salary, in turn, it's often better to pick a role that you actually enjoy versus a role that maybe you're only trying to take because you think it's going to pay you more money. After all, there are plenty of copywriters who are making upwards of $300,000 a year and data analysts who are probably making upwards of four dollars to $500,000 a year. And if you don't believe me, just dig into Upwork.com and what you'll see is that yeah, there's some analysts charging upwards of $200 an hour. Um, they might cross a little bit into data scientist level, but overall, they're capable of charging that much. In terms of business value, there's still a lot that you can do as a data analyst that could, in many ways, outshine what a programmer or a data engineer can do because you're literally connected to the business. So. I would care less about the role or the technical problems you're trying to solve unless you enjoy solving those technical problems. But don't let that distract you from finding a role that you actually like doing versus people. So that's my quick uh, snippet on you know salaries. Next, let's dive into skills. And the skills for these different roles actually do have a decent amount of crossover. For example, you compare data scientist to data engineer to analyst engineer. You should probably all know SQL to some degree. And and to some degree, some level of databases, as well as some level of maybe even Python, especially if you're in the data science or data engineering category. Analytics engineer is probably somewhat um, optional, or at least the depth does not need to be that deep because if you're using a tool like DBT, there's Jinja 2, which has some Python-esque syntax, so you will need to be familiar there in that case. From there, many of these roles tend to branch off you know, analytics engineers, I tend to find, are maybe purely much, much stronger on the SQL side than most of the other two roles. Again, in general, they also probably know how to use a whole host of tools. They also do have experience with things like GitHub and the cloud, at least again, in general. But I think a lot more of the depth in terms of these skill sets or tools in terms of like the technical side lies more on the data engineer. Uh, the analytics engineer, their tools are more 
focused or geared towards driving business value. Um, again, that's why SQL is valuable here. They might know some Tableau to build some dashboards, and they're going to know just enough Python and cloud to get their work done. But the data engineer is really going to be the one that's doing a lot of the more hard technical work, a lot of the coding, you know, they're going to be doing a lot more in terms of like dealing with streaming applications. Uh, if they're still dealing with an abstraction layer of Hadoop, that's, you know, MapReduce, they're going to be doing that portion as well. And they might even get stuck with a lot of the DevOps of actually like managing everything and pushing uh, code to production and CICD. And it's going to be a lot heavier in terms of like what we think of the traditional, um, you know, software engineer like skill set. I know plenty of data engineers who are not just the, you know, software engineer, but they are also often the cloud admin person who's having to spin up and spin down different resources on AWS or GCP, while also, you know, figuring out how to manage their whole CID CD platform and how they're going to push everything and running QA and it, it can get very extensive very quickly, which is why they often don't have a huge amount of time to focus on the business value aspect because their business value is by creating maintainable, manageable systems that repeat day in, day out. And if anything does go wrong, they can track it quickly. Whereas the analytics engineers take all the data that these systems produce and then push it out to a, you know, analyst or some sort of a business stakeholder, someone that maybe is connected to a dashboard. And then of course, data scientists, I don't think are often as tool driven unless they're doing something in terms of like deploying machine learning models. But on the base level, it's a lot of, you know, Python, R, Jupyter Notebooks. Maybe you've got some experience using um, cloud versions of Jupyter Notebooks, maybe SageMaker and a couple other components. But overall, it kind of is the same tool because a lot of your tool sets, at least what I think of when I think of data scientists, is more on the math side, you know, more of the, the statistics and how you set up experimentation. So they're not necessarily tools per se, but they kind of are often used as tools to help solve your problems. So how you implement those tools is just using some sort of programming language, often in a notebook. And that's why it's it's slightly less tool heavy. And I often find that I think data engineer and analytics engineers are a little more tool heavy, especially since we've kind of gone away from a world where, you know, data scientists were expected to do almost everything. Uh, you know, probably about 10 years ago, it was like managing Hadoop clusters and, and spinning things up and spinning things down. Um, you know, we've kind of further and further separated this work out to try to specialize people in different kind of areas of data. Now we've kind of lightly talked about responsibilities via tool sets because it's almost unavoidable to talk about the tool sets without talking about what you're going to do with those tools. But overall, data engineers tend to be the ones that focus on developing the data pipelines that pull data from raw sources. This might be streaming systems. It could be batch systems. It could be connecting to SFTPs and pulling data that way, you know, APIs, etc. There are a ton of different ways you could basically pull data from a raw source, create some sort of pipeline that has, you know, data QA wrapped around it. So this could be through a tool or through something that you've developed because that is another key responsibility is not only is your goal to pull data, but you are trying to make sure it's accurate. From there, you're often going to at least develop what I would say is the core level of uh, your data warehouse. So this is often the base representation of everything in the business, right? Like if you're a car sales business, it's the lowest level of transaction would be probably the car sale. In fact, actually it might be even lower than that. Maybe there's an add on table, but for the most part, like you can just view that as the car sale and like that's what you develop. Everything else after that is kind of in theory where the analytics engineer steps in. Again, I say in theory because it's never cut and dry. It will never be, there's always crossover, um, especially with skill sets that all kind of do very similar things. Um, it won't be perfect. So in theory, the analytics engineer will now kind of develop on top of this whole system. Um, they will kind of take that core data, develop maybe further modeling or aggregates um, that will go out for either again, dashboards, maybe they'll push it out to, to analysts. They're just a little more business facing. So they're often about kind of tracking and managing personally, a lot of that governance of how that data gets processed from the core later. So they're often creating, you know, again, maybe what some people might call data marts for specific applications and use cases. They might be helping implement uh, different metrics in different kinds of tables. It's like metrics tables for reports. They're really gonna be working very hand in hand with the business to understand what their needs are to, and what that looks like on the data side. How can we develop those reports or those tables so that you can, you can have them very easily? And how can we make sure it's consistent every time? And I think that's what's very important. Um, you know, in a weird way, the data engineer from a data consistency standpoint should have, quote unquote, the easier time because you're not putting too much business logic into things. You're not trying to manage and maintain all the metrics definitions. 
Instead, you're really just trying to develop that core layer of business. The analytics engineer on top of that is now implementing a lot more complex logic, doing calculations, pushing that into dashboards and so on and so forth. And then from there, a data scientist kind of plays all in between. They might be accessing the raw data. They might be kind of working with the metrics. They might be helping define those metrics. They're gonna be doing a ton of research. They're gonna be doing a ton of just analysis for trying to find value in data. Um, they're gonna be setting up experiments if, you know, especially if you work at a thing because it's just all part of the nature of developing features, you know, you're gonna create experimentation systems. Their goal is really to find the value in data. And sometimes it can be more, you know, uh, backwards facing, you know, looking for trends in the past. Sometimes it's gonna be more focused forward where it's doing predictive work and trying to predict you know, what type of price you should send to uh, each client or customer, or should you send a coupon to a person A versus person B, or should you show feature A or feature B to, you know, whoever a certain user is. This is the kind of stuff you're gonna be setting up, developing, researching into. Um, it's all gonna be about, you know, analyzing data, finding value, creating experiments to then, you know, prove you know, what value you think you're seeing in the data. Um, so you can start advising the business on where they should be focusing you know, future efforts to where they could be saving or reducing their costs or where they could be improving um, revenue by, you know, increasing how often they either do sales or decreasing how often they do sales. There will often still be some need to do some data visualizations. Although I personally have found that a lot of data scientists prefer using like Python or R for data visualizations than like Tableau. So that is something that's always interesting to me in terms of like where people like reporting, but that's kind of the different data roles in a nutshell. And what you'll see is I think each of these tend to either be more technical or more heavily connected with the business. I'd say data engineers are very, very technical in its purest form. Again, it can really depend company to company. Analytics engineers and data scientists do have this half-half mix where they're trying to drive business value, arguably in slightly different ways, but arguably there's a lot of crossover even here. Although I'd say the analytics engineers focus more on, I think, trying to define kind of past data, whereas I think uh, data scientists really do a lot more in, in, in trying to drive future uh, business value. So the question becomes, which role is right for you? And that's going to come down to what you prefer, you know, how technical you like being, how technical the problems you like solving are. And here's the other thing. You might not be able to answer any of these questions. You might think you're going to enjoy the researchy math side of data science until you jump into it and you realize a lot of this works very ethereal and I'm not necessarily getting to produce systems and I want to produce systems. And then you might push yourself over to data engineer and you might enjoy it. Or maybe you're going to be like, well, I still like the analytics engineer role, but it really is a process in finding this. So I wouldn't say you need to find the right role on your first shot, in your first job, especially if you're just coming out of college. If you're just coming out of college, I'd say try as much as you can. Don't get tied to a role or a title. Just try it out. See if the data science life is for you. And if it's not, then try data engineer. And if it's not, try software engineer. I mean, there are plenty of examples of even YouTubers who have taken on many different roles and tried different uh, positions. So I wouldn't get stuck in one. Just be open to trying different experiences and realize life is long. And if you're 23 or 24 right now, I mean, just realize you've got arguably at least, what, 30 years of work ahead of you. Uh, maybe you're lucky and you can fire in the next 20, but either way, it's plenty of work. So I wouldn't get too stuck up um, on trying to find the perfect job today. And with that, guys, I want to say thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time. Goodbye.